So how's it going everyone? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. This is my first video back from the small break that I had. It's something I wanted to do for a very long time. It's a beginner's tutorial, but it's going to be slightly different from the usual beginner's tutorials that's already on YouTube. This is going to be a EDM specific beginner's tutorial. I'm assuming the majority of my viewership are quite advanced producers. They know how to make pretty advanced tracks. They know the DAW world, well, they know what they're doing. So for anyone like that, this video may not be for you, but you can still learn something. So I'm gonna walk you through the basics of FL Studio first, showing you all the important buttons and things on the DAW to help you produce music. And then we're going to move on to the piano roll, the channel rack, the mixer, and the basic view playlist options and show you what you can do on them. Next, I'm going to show you the significance of samples and how to drag your own samples in, how to add your own samples in the view browser library, and then onto the big part of the DAW, which is the VSTs. Some of them are mixing, some of them are synthesizers. I'm going to differentiate the two, show you what the differences are between them both and what they're used for. I'm going to try and keep it as easy to follow as possible. And yeah, I hope you learned something and I hope you learn how to start a basic EDM song and how to start basic music production. So to start off with part one, I'm going to show you around the DAW. I'm going to show you all the main buttons that you need to know and what they actually do. So yeah, I hope I can teach you something and let's get straight into this. Enjoy. Bye. 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 So first things first, we're looking at the FL Studio user interface. This is what you see every time you open up the software. It may look a little confusing and intimidating at first, but once you actually learn all the integral buttons, it's rather simple. As there are a few buttons that you won't actually be using, I'll show you them in a second. But like I said, once you learn the main buttons that you need to make a song, you don't need to worry as it is rather simple to learn. So let's start on the right side here. We're gonna start with the main five buttons here. These are the main buttons that help you make your composition and make you make your songs. So we're gonna start right here in the view playlist, which is this main section here that you're looking at. This is where all your work you've been working on will be placed. This is where all your patterns, audio files, etc., will be placed here to work on your composition and work on your song. We'll go more in depth with that later on. Next is the channel rack, which is this thing here. The channel rack is one of the most integral parts in FL Studio, as this is where all your channels are located. So all your patterns, audio elements, and drums, automations will be placed here. And then you'll use the channel rack to place all your channels into the playlist to work on your composition. Next is the piano roll which is essentially what it is, it's a piano. This is where you make all your melodic elements. You have a lot more precision here compared to the channel rack. You have control over everything MIDI related. You can manipulate the MIDI notes using these tabs down here. Again, we'll go more in depth with that later on. Next is the browser. This button over here, you click it and it brings up a massive browser over here. Here is where all your sounds are located. So all your sound samples and built-in FL Studio instruments will be placed here. As you can see under this packs tab, you can see a bunch of drums, instruments, stuff like that, which comes with FL Studio itself. So the final view button section is the mixer. This is where all your channels from the channel rack will be sent to for processing using effects. To keep it simple for now, the mixer is used to fine tune your sounds and make them sound more professional and glued together to make it sound like one song. We'll go more in depth for that later on. So that is the five main view buttons. So next up, we're going to move slightly to the left here and look at the pattern selector and the main snap. Patterns contain MIDI notes that create a rhythmic and melodic structure in your composition. Patterns can be placed into the playlist as pattern clips. So for example, I'm gonna click pattern one into the playlist and you'll see it placed here. And this is what will make up your composition of your song made up of multiple patterns, drums, melodies, synths, chords, etc., etc. The name at the top of the pattern represents what the pattern is playing. So I highly recommend renaming your patterns just for organization purposes. So for example, we click this pointer down arrow here, left click, rename them color. And for example, say this was playing a kick drum, we'll rename this kick, click enter, and it will save it as kick. So now we know that pattern one is kick. On the pattern selector two, you can see two buttons. The left one is a drop down menu to see all your patterns created. And the right one is a plus symbol. When you click the plus sign, it will automatically ask you what you want to name your pattern so say for example you want to make a snare and clap next you'll name it snare and clap and there you go then you just left click into the playlist again and as you can see snare and clap is pattern two and pattern one is kick and now you can see if you click the left down arrow here it will show both patterns later on when i show you the piano roll i can go a bit more in depth with patterns uh, just to show you a bit more what you can do with them Next, just to the left of the pattern selector, we have the main snap, also known as the global snap panel. I don't want to go too much in depth with this because I don't think you'll be using this that much starting out. I didn't personally, I could be wrong, you may want to use it, which is why I'm going to quickly go over it. The snap panel selects the snap for everything in your DAW. So the piano roll, the playlist and the event editor. If I click down and show you, if you select one of these, it will affect the playlist, which is this thing here, the piano roll and some other stuff in the DAW as well. So to give you an example, to make sure the actual global snap editor affects this, you have to do two things first. One of them being clicking this shoe icon near this horseshoe icon, which is the snap to grid for the playlist. Click it and you have to make sure this is selected to main and you also have to do this for the piano roll too so click this button here which we showed earlier it 
brings up the piano roll. Click the horseshoe icon again here and make sure it's selected to main. This selects the snap to grid for the piano roll. Come out to that. Now if we choose one of these, for example, one third, this is triplets. As you can see, it changes the grid. I'm going to change them to some different ones to show you a couple examples. I keep it on line most of the time, but if you want to make a track in triplets, you can change it to one third beat. If we go into the piano roll, you can also see it affects it there as well. So that is the main snap grid. Next, we're going to move on to the metronome and the typing keyboard. If you're not familiar with what a metronome is, it's basically a short click that will play at the beginning of each beat. As you may hear at the beginning of each beat, the first beat is accented. So I'm gonna give you an example quickly. So as you can hear, the first click is accented to give you an audio representation of the new bar. So this helps to keep in time with your song's tempo if you're recording an instrument like piano, guitar, vocals, etc. If you didn't know, you can right click the metronome and you can change it to a beep, a cowbell or a hi-hat. I personally prefer the tick. I find the cowbell and the beep to be a bit too much, very aggressive. The hi-hat isn't too bad, but I find the tick to be the most bearable. Next is the keyboard to piano roll button. If it's turned off, it means nothing will happen when you tap your keyboard. If you turn it on, we're using FL keys here, which comes with FL Studio itself. If it's turned on, if you're using a desktop keyboard or a laptop keyboard, you can press a key and it'll play a note. So that is very helpful to uh, create some sort of melody if you can, or just to test out what sounds you're using quickly. So yeah, just to go over it again, when this is enabled, your laptop or desktop keyboard will function as a MIDI keyboard allowing you to play notes. So next we're going to go slightly left again and look at the tempo and the play, pause, record section over here. This panel contains all the buttons for playing, recording, switching between patting and song mode and setting the project tempo. So to start here, you see this number here, 130. This is the project tempo. If you left click and hold and drag down, you can change it and drag up and it will increase. Or you can right click, set a specific one here, or you can also click type in value and type in a specific value. Next, just to the left of that, you'll see this button here with the red circle. This is the recording section. If you left click, it will bring up this menu here. You can record audio into the playlist, meaning like a vocal or a guitar, for example. Underneath that is notes and automation. This means if you have a MIDI keyboard or you can use the keyboard on your laptop or desktop to record a melody, or you can click everything and that means it will record audio, notes and automation, and pretty much anything else. Next, we have a stop button, meaning if you double click it, it will take the song back to the start. A play and pause, which is self-explanatory, you know what that does, and then Finally, we have a pattern and song mode section. If it's lighted up orange, it means it's in pattern mode. So when it's in pattern mode, of course, it's playing the pattern. So if you click play, you'll see it's playing whatever in the piano roll. Of course, this section here, you'll see the line going across here. And if you click song, it will light up green. That means it's playing anything inside the playlist. Now you can see the bar going along here. So again, if it's orange, it means it's playing pattern mode. If it's green, it means it's playing song mode. And then to finish off this final section here, you'll see these two knobs here, master volume and master pitch. Master means it's basically in control of the entire project. You can also see one here on the mixer, which we'll show later on, but it basically means if you turn it down, everything inside the DAW and project will be turned down because this knob controls everything over the DAW. If you turn down the master pitch, it will pitch down anything inside the DAW from melodies, vocals, drums, and vice versa. If you pitch it up, it will do the same thing. So we've got a couple more sections left over here so we're going to explain these and then we're going to go more in depth in more specific parts of the DAW. So we've got three sections left over here which we're going to go through now. First we're going to go through the tool section over here. Tools are used to do specific things like mute, select, slice, delete etc. So I'm going to go through each and individual tool and show you what they do. So the first one over here is draw which is pretty self-explanatory. You left click on the playlist and it draws a pattern. Uh, you can also hold the left click down and you can drag it to a specific part of the track you want to. Next is paint. It is the same as draw but it allows you to paste multiple ones so you left click drag and you can paste multiple as opposed to draw if you left click and drag it will move the pattern paint allows you to essentially paint multiple patterns like this so it's a more quicker and efficient way if you want to paste multiple patterns. Next is delete, which again is self-explanatory. If you have a pattern here and you use this one and you left click, it deletes the pattern. You can also right click patterns and it does the same thing. You don't always have to use the delete tool. I'm going to keep a pattern here so I don't have to keep pasting it. Next is mute. Again, self-explanatory, you left click, it mutes the pattern. When it's a darker grid like this, it means it's muted. So you can see the difference here. That's muted. 
that isn't slip. I rarely, rarely use slip. I'm not very familiar with what it does, but my understanding is you left click and drag and you can select a certain part of the pattern that you want. As you can see, it's moving. Uh, I don't really use slip in my project, so uh, I can't really explain too much on that. Next is slice, which is essentially a scissor tool. You left click and you can see a line here. This is basically a scissor tool, so you can release and you can see it's chopping up the pattern in individual sections. Next is select, you left click and drag and you can select certain parts. So as you can see, I've selected this part that we chopped with the scissor tool and we can click delete and it will delete that part of the pattern. Next is zoom, you left click and it zooms in on the pattern. You can right click, it does the same thing, pretty much it. And finally it's playback. This is a fast tool to play song mode if you left click and hold. It's playing what's inside the song mode. You can also see the song mode change up here momentarily when we left click. So that is pretty much all the tools. On the far left side of your screen, you'll see this section over here. This is called the picker. This lets you have control over all your patterns, audio files, and automation clips. This really helps with organization when you want to find a specific part what's inside your project. So over here, you'll see three buttons. One of them looks like a piano. One of them looks like a waveform. One of them is some sort of wire with two circles on the end. The first one is patterns. You can also see over here underneath the edit, file, and add section. When you highlight over things, it will tell you what they are. So if you're lost, just highlight over them. You can see what they do. So when you highlight over this, you'll see it says picker patterns. And you can see this is pattern one. Next is audio clips. I haven't got any audio clips inside the project now, so you can't see any. And finally is automation clips, which again, we don't have any automation clips inside the project, so you don't see any. But it will appear pretty much like this as pattern one. It will show it right here in lists, which is pretty helpful. You can also left click and drag and you can see pattern one floating like that and you can let go of left click and it'll paste the pattern. So I'm going to be leaving part one here. I don't want to show too much in this episode. I just wanted to go through and show you the main FL Studio user interface. Part two, we'll be looking at the view buttons more in depth and showing you actually how to use them and what they're used for. And then we'll be looking at the mixer. And then part three, we'll be looking at the VSTs and go more in depth with the actual software. And then after that, we'll start looking into the basics of EDM music production. So I hope you enjoyed part one. If you learned anything, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. And I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Have a wonderful day and take care.